Skates, written by Quote with Hope, and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. Hitoshi and Izuku have an ice skating date, and Eri comes along. UA was known for extensive training facilities, ranging from all different types of pools, sand pits, gymnastic courses, and more, all of which were meant to be strictly used for training purposes, and they were only to be used for people who went to the school. They even offered equipment if asked for, which led us to why Hitoshi and Eri lay grovelling at their pop's feet. I already told you, if you want to have civilians on campus, you're going to have to talk to Nezu, Hizashi said. He could feel a shiver run down his back as he mentioned the name of his boss. And we told you he's too scary, Eri cried, as Aizawa made his way in with a cup of coffee. What makes you think he doesn't scare me? Yamada's quirk shining through just a little. We don't know the fact that he's your boss. Hitoshi lifted his head slightly as the cat began to bat his messy hair. Why don't you just send Eri in? No one can say no to those puppy eyes. Hitoshi gasped in offence as he held Eri closer to him. You're willing to send your only daughter into the rat's den? Aizawa was beginning to wonder how long this show was going to go on for. Oh, don't you act like you weren't about to send your only father in. You aren't our only father. Dad is literally standing right there. You're only mentally alive, father. With the pleading looks they kept giving each other, it was safe to assume the soap opera was finished. Taking a long swig from his mug, that was totally not pure vodka, he stepped into the conversation. Why don't you just text him? I'm sure he wouldn't mind if it was just one person. One person we have yet to meet, goes and said, snapping his head up with eyes of fury that could rival his own and an unwavering voice. I'd rather die and let Mineta get my shit than let the rat know about my personal life. After throwing his head back with a loss of sanity laugh, Aizawa looked at his kids with one of his signature smiles. You say that like he doesn't already know. Who do you think told everyone that me and Hazashi got married? It was certainly a surprise, to say the least, when they walked into the teacher's lounge, only to find everything and everyone was decked in white. Before Hitoshi could reply with some level of concern, his phone went off. Would you look at that? He already replied. Sauntering away in his hot pink sweatpants, he left the rest of his family to investigate the random text. Unknown number. Your father is right on both accounts, Hitoshi-kun. All I ask is that you put things back where they belong. Tell Izuku I said hello, and I'm always open for a cup of tea, will you? Well, Hitoshi wasn't interested in poking that bear, or mouse, at the moment. Unlike the rest of his family, he only cared about letting Izuku know about the date. Although he was slightly concerned as to why his boyfriend was on close enough terms with his principal to be able to have tea with him. Izuku and Hitoshi had made a deal about the next date they had. Hitoshi has to bring at least one of his family members, and no, cats do not count. It was their plan to get Izuku used to his family without causing an all-around panic, like introducing an animal to a new environment. You have to do it slowly, or else shit goes haywire. Which is why Eri stood next to her brother outside the UA gates. Izuku said he needed to pick up something and that he would meet them there. So, what do you like about Mr. Izuku? Eri asked, lifting her head slightly above the bundles of clothing her fathers had made her put on. Well, he's kind, Hitoshi starts, and he's very sweet, he... The teen went on for about a minute, till he saw the teasing grin his sister was giving him. Brat, he thought, till he saw a blob of green approaching through all the white. Hey! Izuku began to slightly jog towards the two with a paper bag. Hey, Izu. Hitoshi's face brightened at the sight of his strawberry, a smile coming on his face. Izuku, this is Eri. Eri, this is Izuku, or the vegetable man, as you keep calling him. He gestured her to move out from behind his leg, but she stood frozen. Crouching down, Azuku got down to Eri's level with the paper bag in front of him. Hello, Eri. It's great to finally meet you in person. His voice was as gentle as it was in the phone calls, maybe even nicer. It it's nice to meet you too. Her voice was small but clear. I remember you liked candy apples. Stretching out his arm with the neat paper bag, the fresh smell of apples and sugar enticed her. Thank you, Mr. Izuku. 
Her eyes lit up at the realisation that he'd bought her the most perfect thing in the world, a sugary sweet candy apple. But before she could take the bag, a purple cat paw glove grabbed it before she could. How about we head inside before you get a sugar rush? Hitoshi said, the paper bag in his gloved hand, the other swiping his key card for the gate. Right, come on Eri, I'll race you to the door. With that, Azuku and Eri had their little race, but came to a halt in the middle of the path. It's the left path, Hitoshi called, as they began their race again, now with a sense of direction. For someone with the personality of a rabbit, he's really good with her. The chill inside the rink almost seemed colder than outside, shivers running down the three's spines. Pairs of skates and a set of keys to the intercom and lighting systems had already been laid out on the countertop, ready for use. Izuku was quick to hand Eri her pair and Hitoshi his as the keys were left behind. It was at this point specific things began to dawn on Hitoshi, like how amazing his boyfriend is with kids. Also, the fact that he had no clue how to skate. But he had nothing to worry about, right? Eri didn't know, so he could play it off that he was just showing her how to. So, Eri, have you ever been skating? Izuku asked while lacing up his skates. Yep, Papa took me while Hitoni and Dad were at school, she replied cheerfully, completely unaware of the realisation her brother was having. Shit, I'm about to make a fool of myself in front of both of them, aren't I? Hey, Hitoshi, you ready? Izuku asked, standing with Eri in the opening of the rink. Oh, yeah, it couldn't be that hard, right? Just like walking. It was, in fact, nothing like walking. He could only wonder how as he watched from the wall as Eri and Izuku skate around. They were so graceful with it. Izuku even taught Eri how to skate backwards like him. Hey Plum, are you okay? Izuku slid to a halt beside him, concern lacing his tone. Yeah, I'm fine. The two of them watched Eri glide around in silence for a few seconds before Hitoshi spoke up. You didn't have to get her that apple, you know. Izuku brushed it off with a wave of his hand. I couldn't just come empty-handed. It didn't feel polite. The silence returned, but this time interrupted by Izuku. Come on, just because you have to watch your sister doesn't mean you can't have fun. He grabbed Hitoshi's hands before he could object, his tight demeanour breaking completely. His arms flailed wildly as Izuku, joined by Eri, skated around him in circles. Izuku, Bunny, Thumper, please take me back. He yelped, as he did everything he could not to look like a fool and not to fall on his ass at the same time. Hey, Hitoshi, I think I might rename you Bambi. Eri giggled at her brother's distress, the little demon. Would you stop laughing and help me? He shouted, slowly sliding forward and backwards. This was it. He could feel himself falling backwards towards the cold ice. The last thing he was going to hear before he finally lost all his flair was the taunting sounds of his younger sister's laughs and the taunts of his boyfriend. If I'm going down, you're going down with me. In a last ditch effort, he reached for both of their sleeves and tugged. All three of them hit the ice with a solid thud and a yelp, but silence quickly engulfed them. After a minute, Izuku started to giggle, then chuckle, and then finally burst into a full out laugh. Eri followed soon after. Her giggles were cheery and unaffected by the fact that she'd hit the ground with a great amount of force. Hitoshi couldn't help but join them, the situation finally dawning its humour on him. That's how they stayed for the rest of the date, laughing and giggling on the solid ice floors of the UA skating rink. One down, two more to go. Nezu smiled wickedly at the CCTV, the teacup and his paws still warm with Lady Grey. After sending the video to his faculty group chat, he was quick to silence it, before the storm of notific- Hey there guys, gals and non-binary pals, it's Ella, and I hope you're having a lovely day today. Wow, I love how chaotic Nezu is in this, just like, <laughs> he's spying on them in their home. <laughs> Just like sending out the cute videos to the group chat. Honestly, Nezu's got the plug and I love that for him. Honestly, it's very much giving me Rat Overlord. If you don't know her, I promise she knows you. But this was part three of the window display series and it's so cute. Oh, I love them so much. I ship Shindeku just like so hard. But do you? 
let me know in the comments below. You know, we can talk about the fic, we can talk about anything, about Christmas, about life, you know. I just like to chat with you guys. You could also like the video, you know, if you liked it, and to boost my serotonin levels. And you can also subscribe to be notified whenever I make new videos, which, you know, at the moment is every day because it's Ficmas, where I'm making a video every day in the lead up to Christmas, which has been really fun. I, I am a little bit stressed about tomorrow's video. We'll see how that one goes. I'm actually, <laughs> well, if you're about yesterday or if you're in the Discord, you probably heard about my very swollen gums and how much toothache I've been having. Basically I have to have emergency dental tomorrow and I'm pretty sure they're going to take my tooth out. So we'll see how good I am at talking tomorrow. Uh, if it, okay then I'll still post otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do. Cry probably. But you know I'm committed to Figma so I'll have to figure something out. Also thanks to the lovely people over on Discord I realised that my 100th video will be going up like this week and I feel like that's kind of a big deal like a hundred videos honestly I did not I don't think I even thought I would ever make a hundred videos of anything so I'm very proud I mean I haven't done it yet but we're gonna get there and I feel like I should do something to celebrate but I don't really know what to do now because I feel like I've I, I did all the things I did a Q&A and I did a live stream I already have a discord so what should I do? Let me know down in the comments below. Or, you know, speaking of Discord, I have one of those. And you can always message me on there. Um, I am very active in it and I talk to you guys all the time. We have a really great time. The link to it will be in the description below. But before I go on talking your bloody ears off, until I see you again, be sure to practice some self-care. That's right. Go to bed on time. Eat your vegetables and your fruits. Five of them every day. Yeah? I'll know if you didn't. Drink your water. It's really important to stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, not dehydrated. <laughs> and make sure to brush your teeth so that you don't have so many dental issues. Because they suck. And yes... <laughs> This is a threat. <laughs> I will catch you guys at laters.